It may look like a set out of a futuristic sci-fi film, but this high-tech tube inside of an unassuming warehouse in Ogden, Utah has a very practical purpose. This is the Darko Technologies Wind Tunnel, a massive chute capable of generating winds up to 76 miles per hour. It's a fitting backdrop for Clint Jones, the head coach of the Olympic US men's ski jumping team, to demonstrate how the skiers he trains refine the aerodynamics of their approach before liftoff. Physicist Dr. Adam Johnson was on hand to give a play-by-play -play of the forces at work. The most basic force is gravity. That's just what's pulling them down. There's going to be friction, but friction is that force between, in this case, the skis and, and the, the slope, and there's the drag of the air that they're facing, so they're going to try to make themselves as small going into that wind as possible. The, the force of the drag gets bigger not only the faster they go, but the more of their area that gets exposed to the air as they're going in that direction. Using smoke, Clint can visualize how the smallest changes in his body position can create turbulence. They can not only be small, but be smooth, so that there aren't uh, swirls of air, or turbulence is what we'd call it, but the streamlines, so you can just imagine this, this smooth flow going past the body. And in order to fine tune his form while jumping, Clint straps in as the engineers crank up the wind. With real ski jumping, where they're in the air for three or four seconds, then they've got um, all these fluids rushing past them. So that's going to cause drag, which would slow them down. And that's going to get more and more pronounced the faster they're going. But they also get lift, which also gets more and more pronounced the faster they're going. If they just have the skis underneath them, then they're only taking advantage of the surface area that they already have with their body. But if they expand those skis, they get more surface area, they widen out the wing. So they're allowing for hopefully more lift without increasing the drag. So they got to figure out what's the angle that gives them the best bang for the buck, the most lift for, for drag that they're experiencing. This may all seem excessive, but for athletes and their trainers, the wind tunnel has become an essential tool for Olympic success. In a normal training day, we only get four or five opportunities to jump, so it's, um, you know, you don't get a ton of time to kind of play around with things. So the wind tunnel gives us the opportunity to spend minutes at a time in the air, which essentially, you know, that's, that's like taking a couple hundred jumps on the hill. 